first pendulum I've done for a while. No, that's not the bait. And there you go. A beautiful Chesil Beach, black bream. Woohoo! Hello. Welcome back everyone. Welcome back to the home of the Shore Hunter YouTube channel here in Dorset on the beautiful, mighty Chesil Beach. Welcome back everyone. Welcome back to Chesil Beach. As I've just told you in the very erratic and powerful intro. Welcome back to my big loo. Welcome back to an hour's walk past Abbotsbury. Man, woohoo! We'll get onto that in a minute. That naughty lat right there. But look, I can tell I'm not chisel fit. As you can tell from looking at me, I'm no athlete, but I get chisel fit, what I like to call it. When I come out for you once or maybe twice a week, if we're very lucky, I get chisel fit. But where I've not been here for almost a month, can you believe it? I've been in Norway, I've been working shows in Scotland at Glasgow Angling Centre. So if you come along and said hello, it was a privilege and a pleasure to meet you all. But back to it. The sun's shining, it's lumpy, there's not much of a colour, so I like that really. As I've said to you before, when we get brown water, we get brown fish, and that's dogfish, pouting, bits and bobs like that. They're not shit fish, they're just not the fish that I like to target. The sun's shining, it's the end of September, probably on the calendar, the best time of the whole year. So what I'm gonna do, as I'm not even ready, is I've even gotta make some rigs. I've gotta spool some reels up, but we're here. I've walked an hour, as I've said. I'm hanging out my ass, but we've got a chance. Right, that's the intro out of the way. That's all that shouting and pointing. It's just me and you now. Welcome back, everyone. Look at it, it's absolutely beautiful. There's quite a lot of weed. I'm not really happy about that. It's lumpy, as you can see, and we're just on high water. So to be fair, the tides are not great for me this evening. High water is six o'clock tonight, so we're about an hour and a half away from high, which means I will be fishing all the way down to low water, so that's the ebb tide. Low water is midnight, all the way up to high. I am hoping to stay awake all night and fish for you, but as you know, I've just come back from Norway, then I spent four days in Scotland working a show. I come home yesterday, and I've just unpacked my case from Norway, believe it or not. I've got my rods out the, the tube. Luckily, for once, the Norwegian airline haven't taken an eye off or snapped the tip, which is a rarity. But yeah, I've got my naggers, they're fine. I spooled up my 7HTs this morning with some fresh line, so that could be fun and I've not even got any rigs ready. So I'm gonna sort all my stuff out, but look at it. We've got a chance. As I mentioned, the tides could be a little bit more kind to us. What we could have done really is with a midnight high water, so I'm fishing the flood all the way up over the top of the tide and back down, but it's not to be, so I can't do nothing about it. But look, we've definitely got a chance. I'm gonna be out here cod fishing in daylight and maybe step it up tonight, put some wire traces on, and try and target a big conger eel here in Dorset. But welcome back. Thanks again for waiting. Thanks for being patient. We're back home, and I promise you, I'll do my very best to get us a few fish. Right, before we get going, I've got to talk about the elephant in the room. So you should know you're all in shit, because I'm gonna call you by your surname. So, Mr. and Mrs. YouTube, jokes aside, we've got 10,000 subscribers. So let me take you back to 18 months ago when I started this venture. I set up a YouTube channel just to really help me out in my coaching, and now look at us. With all your kind feedback and pushing me on, we've got to this now, where we've got 1.3 million views, and 10,000 subscribers. Now to you at home, that might not mean anything, and it's definitely not earning me a wage yet, 
but it just means that we're doing stuff right and you're enjoying it. And as I'm on my own, I've got no support apart from my very good friends, the few that I've chosen to come out on my channel, which we go into in a bit. It's just me. So I'm not after any praise, but I just want to thank you all for everything you do. It helps me out massively and I hope it helps you out. Not only with the fishing, you know I'm a bloke, I can say that, I'm a man in my 40s now and sometimes I don't feel great. So hopefully I can inspire you at home, if you're male, woman, whatever, to get out fishing. 10 years ago, I'm gonna tell you a little story, all right? But I want you to keep it to yourself because the trouble is with doing stuff like this, you educate your enemy. So if I say too much, then people will use it against me. But what I want you to know is sometimes you see my beautiful wife come out with us and my children. Just over 10 years ago, I was sleeping on my mate's sofa with no wife, no money, and I was pretty much a broken man, all right? I don't want you to feel sorry for me, but just over 10 years from that time, I'm out fishing, I'm loving life, and it is down to fishing. I've repeated that, but you know what I mean. It's down to being out here, looking at the waves, and obviously I've got the support from my wife. I didn't really do anything wrong, just mentally I was in a really shit place, and I've learned to deal with that now, like we all do, probably between our 30s and 40s with all our life experiences. And I had OCD. I thought OCD was just washing your hands. Mine was in my mind. So sometimes people are not that kind to me on YouTube, but I never ever want you guys to know. But I beat myself up more and have done in the past more than anyone can ever do. So I'm not arrogant. I know it can just change just like that. So that's why I try and be myself 100% of the time. And that's why if you come and speak to me or you see me on the beach, I'm just Wayne, the fisherman, and I don't want that to ever change. So I'm waffling a bit, but all I want to say is, stick at it, go fishing. When you get that bite, that's a second that you're not thinking about your life. If you catch a fish, that's a minute. And if you get out and have a good session, sometimes, you can have a whole hour where you're not stressing or going over things in your mind. But look, I haven't really explained it that well, but all I'm saying is I've gone from there, rock bottom, to now I'm back happy with my beautiful wife and children, and that's down to fishing. So thanks everyone. Let's keep fishing, that's what you're saying. Shut up, Wayne. When I come back, we'll do some baiting up, we'll do some casting, we're not bad at that either. We'll catch a few fish and hopefully I can make us a nice video. Thanks a lot, everyone. It means the world, and I'll see you in a minute. Right, welcome back to Chesil Beach. Welcome back to the session. Right, today I am gonna be fishing for cod in daylight. Let's move you up a bit. Woohoo! So yeah, I'm gonna be fishing for cod in daylight and maybe conger eels at night. You know this by now if you've been watching my channel for 18 months and you're one of the 10,000 subscribers. I have a seven ounce grip lead to a splashdown, to a clip, to my rig body of 120 pound, to a bead, a pulley bead, a bead, to a swivel, to a 90 pound hook length, to a 4.0 circle, my Tronics Pro, magic tubing, to a 3.0 J hook. That's a pulley, that's it. Every time you come out fishing, especially when you're using a multiplier, you need to have a couple of casts to make sure your line lays good. The last thing you want to do, as I tell you all the time, is drive all the way down here, super excited. Put your favorite rig on, put a nice peeler crab or a cup of the black lug, slam it out there and get a crack off. So what you need to do is have a couple of casts now. Firstly, check over your shock leader, check your knot. I know it's fine because I've re-spooled and tied the shock leader this morning. That's very important as well. So every time you come fishing, especially when there's people around, make sure you check your shock leader knot. Strange, because as you've seen in Norway, I was just slinging out whole mackerel on eight ounce leads. Now I've got my seven HTs. Yes, I'm using my Nagas, but it's gonna be nice just fishing nice and light. Heading up 
the West Coast. Well, unfortunately, I've not got any fresh blacks, which I would prefer, but I don't think it really matters. Well, it does. I've got an excuse if I don't cash anyway. Yeah, I froze these myself, so I've looked after them. They're still frozen solid. Frozen blacks. How are you all doing? I hope you're doing all right, staying safe. Looking out for yourselves. Fucking hard, what's going on there? Making a bit of a mess of this, if I'm being honest. Right, I'm gonna sort this out. That's my bait. I'm gonna bring you back. I'll be strapping it to a bait needle and putting it on my rig. And there we go, everyone. First cast back on chisel probably in a month, which is just, frankly, ridiculous and not good enough. Let's get it out there. Yeah, it's a frozen bait on a five foot pulley, but I've got no choice and surely it'll work. Now the whole What the hell is that? Can you see that in the water? What I'll do is once I've cast out, I need to get that out of the water, but it looks like half a net. That's not good. I don't want to hook into that. Let's get her out there, son. Come on then. Let's go. It's the first pendulum I've done for a while. Not too bad. I may say so. There we go, everyone. We're fishing. What I'm going to do is go and get that out the water. When I bring you back, I'll show you what it is. But it looks horrendous. And there we go, everyone. We're fishing. It's been a while. There is a super amount of weed in the water. So it could be a bit of a prick. But we'll keep fishing. We'll try hard. It can't be any worse than Norway. I'm not sure if you can see, but the water is completely full of weed. It's a nightmare, I'll take you down. All the way along. I tried to get out whatever that was up there and it turns out it's half of a, a fishing net from a trawler, but it's gone back out now. But yeah, it's not the best. There's weed all the way along, but look, it's fishing. If it was easy, you'd all be here, but look, I'm gonna keep smiling. I'm going to keep trying, and if I get any bites, I promise I'll bring you straight back. So the weather is set to drop off overnight. Six o'clock in the morning, it should be five miles an hour wind. And then tomorrow afternoon, it should be 50. You know what it goes like. You know how it is this year. For me, I know I've told you over and over, 2023, it's been the worst year for me to get out and fish Chesil Beach. You have one day it's fine, the next day it's 50 miles per hour. So yeah, this time tomorrow, probably won't be able to stand up on this beach. So we've got what we call a weather window. Will it help me? I don't know. Will it settle down? Who knows? But we've got a chance. The sisters are out. The Tronics Pro Nagas are sat lovely. And we've got a chance. But look, I'll keep fishing. I'll keep trying. Changing my baits, as you know by now, every 20 minutes. I've got a little bit of ragworm, but I've mainly got frozen baits. And tonight, what I might do is hook up the wire traces, catch a few pout in, and get them out there as bait. Well. I was just changing the bait on the right hand one and I look round and this one has pulled right down. I'm not sure if it's a big bit of weed or fish. That was fishy. Might just be weed though. As I've said, it's first cast, so I don't know how it's been fishing, but this feels a little bit different to a fish. 
If it's a fish, it's a big one. No, I don't think this is a fish. It's not really behaving like one. There's quite a lot of rubbish in the water. Just baiting up the other one. It's pretty much hard work here. I'm getting weed every cast and getting stripped. And I've looked round and this one is on the beach, slack. So I didn't really get time to put the camera on it to start. I'm not sure if it's a fish or weed again. It's pretty hard to tell in these conditions. It's probably weed, but I thought I'd bring it back anyway. Oh yes, we're into a fish. Yes. Oh. oh, I thought it was a cod. I think it might be a bream, but that's okay. We're not blanking. Hey, that's a nice bream. Woo! We're not blanking, everyone. We're on the fish on Chesil, you know. It's pretty hard going, but I got one. And there we go. Look at that. That's a Chesil Beach bream. That is a nice fish, everyone. I'm not holding it out, I promise. But no, jokes aside, that's a little beauty. That's way over a pound. Probably could be two. Anyway, I'm going to get this little chat back. Because I'm not taking any fish home today. I'm going to put him back. I don't really eat fish. I give some away, but I can't be asked. Let's let this one live another day. Cheers, Mr. Bream. Hopefully one of you can come down here and catch it yourself. Please remember, when returning fish, don't go down there. Let's go. The next wave. It's a big one. Ooh, the fishing's quite slow. It's quite apt, really, with what we were talking about earlier. But see that? And all this. That's why I'm here. It's beautiful, eh? But yeah, the fishing's really hard. I'm bringing in rafts of weed and I'm getting stripped. This year there seems to be really small bream. I've not really had many crabs, not personally anyway. But yeah, seems to be loads of small bream stripping me out. But I will try and fish all night, but it could be hard and I'm not really chisel fit, am I? But look, I can see there's some water on the camera. I'm gonna keep fishing, but look, don't forget that. If you're feeling down, Look at that thing out there. Little gestures in life, like I like to do, when I go to the shop, I want to make the bus stop. Say good morning to people. Thank you very much. How are you doing? Go to the McDonald's drive-thru. I like that, obviously. And say, how are you today? You'll be blown away by how many people go. Oh, thank you. No one really asked me how I'm doing. Just small little gestures like that will help you and make you feel a little bit better about yourself. And that's what it does for me. And looking after yourself. That's why I go on detoxes, try not to drink that much, try not to eat loads of shit all the time, because it, what goes in comes out in my mind. That's what it's like for me anyway. But look, there's the sun. This is Chesil Beach. Oh, I'll stop talking. Look at that. See you later, everyone. I'm gonna play some of our good music. We like this, but that's for you. For all of you lot at home that support me. Just so you know, if you're sat at home, this is the worst conditions to film a fishing video on Chesil. The wind is coming this way and the sea spray is massive. But I hope you don't mind if it's a little bit blotchy. Can you still see me? It's beautiful. I'm oh, not really beautiful anymore. Well, actually, I don't think I've ever been beautiful. Well, my mum said I was beautiful, so.
Yeah, so what happens is in the fishing world, people message me and they're like, what are the competition naggers like? Are they strong? I'm like, yeah, mate, look at that. On the weed. Anyway, I'm off for a night out with the lads. See you in a bit, everyone. Welcome back to Chesil Beach. Guess what? It's dark. You probably guessed that. Um, yeah, I've got the lights, as you can see. I'm lighting up the show, but it's been hard. I've had that one bream, pretty disappointing. Now I know what's going to happen. The piting are going to turn up and ruin my life. But look, I'm going to keep fishing. I'm going to keep trying. I will be fishing as long as I can be asked because the winds are going to drop out. As you can see, they've dropped out already to five and three miles per hour. Then as a bite on the right hand rod, yeah, boy, look at that. Go on, son. Remember now, it's taking line. What the? Yes, right on cue. Oh, we've got a decent fish on here, everyone. What I'm going to do, I wasn't expecting this. <laughs> I'll turn the camera around, we do some filming. I was just talking to you naturally, the camera on, and we had a bite live. Um, I've got so much sea mist coming in. It may be blurry for you, so it's probably not the best. I don't know what this is. It's ragworm tipped with squid. Um, could be a small conger. That could be a codlin though, which would be nice. Yeah. Oh, it's head shaking now. I think we might have a codlin, which is nice. Well, I'm not sure what it is. Whoa, head shaking then. Yeah. Could be a little conger eel, I'd say. Oh, it's a smooth out. That's right, went off, all right? All right, so I've got my headlamp on. Let's have a look at this fish. And there we have it. It's a great white. Cousin. Yeah, he clipped bait. Remember now, he's nailed that. Got him right in a circle, look. There you go, everyone. First cast at night, because I just moved to shelter. Sorted my stuff out, got all the lights out, and we're on the fish. It's crazy, but it's only half past eight. Where's the summer gone? Did we even have one? But look. There's a shark with no teeth and I'll get it back. Thanks everyone. Wish me luck. We're on the night shift. I'll put my headlamp on and try not to blind you, all right? If I do, I'm sorry. Whoa, there we are. Hopefully it's a cod and not a conga, but it doesn't feel that big. Whatever it is. We're on the fish, eh? A little conga or it's coming in quite quick. Yeah, it's nothing big. Oh, conga, I'd say. Is it there? We got catching up with it. Oh yeah. A conga rail. Darn it. For a minute I thought it was a cod. Oh well. Let's sort this fish out. There's a conga rail. He's unhooked himself. What a little cutie. Oh, lovely. Anyway, we're on the fish. I'm not really going to give it much more. Conditions are quite hard. I'm going to get a little bit of sleep because I've not really done that recently. So I'll get a little bit of sleep. Get up at first light. As I've said to you, Half past five in the morning, it's high water and we've definitely got a chance of a cod. But look, I'll fish on for a bit. If I get any more bites, I'll bring you straight back. Morning. Welcome back to my abode. 
Welcome back to my beautiful igloo here on Chesil Beach. Now I've not, and I mean, I have not done that for a while. Slept on the holy pebbles. <sighs> yeah, so sorry if I look like I've been ran over. <laughs> um, yeah. Anyway, back to the fishing. Believe it or not, it's quarter to six. What's happened? It's dark. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's quarter to six and it's high water in about quarter of an hour's time. Ideally, I like first light on high water, which it pretty much is, but I'd like it to be getting light. But I've got myself a brew. I've got all my rigs ready. As you know by now, if you watched my channel before, I've changed all my hooks. Not my circle hooks, just my panel hooks, the bottom J hook. Um, that didn't make sense. I said both hooks then. You know what I mean, it's cold. So I've kept the circle hook on because they're quite expensive. Well, all hooks are expensive. Um, but yeah, I've changed the J hook on the bottom because that's the one that's getting caught every time I wind up the shingle. Yeah, more of the same. First light, if I could look into my crystal ball, hopefully I won't get stripped every two minutes. Got a feeling we'll get two or three cod this morning. The weather is turning bad about one o'clock. It's going to be 55 mile an hour winds. So as the day gets on, the sea's going to get up, it's going to get up, and it's going to get to a point where, well, I could probably fish, but it's going to rain and be horrible. And obviously I spent a night on the shingle. So yeah, what I'm going to do, sort my rigs out, get them baited up. I'm actually going to have a cast at dark, which I don't normally do. I like to wait for the first light, but it's high water any minute now and we've definitely got a chance. So good morning, everyone. My name is Wayne. This is, as you know by now, the beautiful Chesil Beach. The wind's dropped out, so I may even get the drone up, but let's do some fishing and hopefully, I love saying hopefully, all right? That's my bad thing, but hope is a good word, so I'm gonna keep saying it. But look, let's do some fishing and hopefully I can finish off a nice video for you. Now, I don't normally swear on my YouTube channel, but last night I absolutely shit myself. I had a fox come in and virtually get in my shelter while I was in there. And I heard rustling and a noise and he picked up, I had one of my rigs with a whole mackerel on, which is probably, you know, I probably shouldn't have done that. But when I wound in last night, I just put my rigs next to my shelter. I didn't really think, well, I just didn't think. So um, always make sure you cut the bait off. I didn't, and uh, I had a, a tug of war with a fox, which is, you know, it's quite strange at two in the morning. I've got hold of the grip lead. The fox is pulling on the mackerel. Luckily, he let go, and I managed to cut the bait off and chuck it to him. But yeah, that's just a little lesson, but it was pretty scary. I had one of those moments as an adult where I had my head under my jacket thinking, I don't want to look out. <laughs> That's all right though, I just got out. Look at me, big timed it, chinned in, bang, get out son. No, I didn't, I got out. He just had hold of the mackerel and I had hold of the rig. Pretty funny, I wish I put the camera on. Would have made good viewing for you. You know me, it's just life of being me. I'm gonna have my brew. I'm gonna do some beating up. Hopefully I won't get stripped and I can make us a nice end to the video and catch us a few more fish on this beautiful beach here in Dorset. And there we are, just like that. And we're fishing. As you've seen yesterday, or last night, I was getting hassled by maybe small bream. I was getting stripped. So yet again this morning, I've used some squid alongside my blacks, just to give me a chance. What I found was when I was putting straight blacks out on their own, I was getting stripped within minutes. A little bit of squid alongside it pumps up the bait, bulks it up. And I was probably lasting 12 to 15 minutes max. But that's fine. This year has been quite strange for me on this beach for 
base getting stripped. Normally, this time of year, I find you can put a, just a single black lug out on its own and half an hour later, wind it in and it's totally fine, but I don't know. The one good thing is there's something out there eating it. And if they're eating my bait, something has got to be eating them. But look, I'm going to continue fishing. I'm going to drink my brew. It's a beautiful morning. It's pretty still. The wind is actually coming from the east at the moment. But as I mentioned earlier, as the day progresses, it's going to get up to a storm. Probably some name that they've made up. But it's going to be a little bit naughty and we will definitely be getting off this beach about two o'clock this afternoon. But we've got a chance. So wish me luck. Good morning, everyone, again. This is the beautiful Chesil Beach. Let's get a few bites. Right, the right hand rod's gone slack. Let's have a look, shall we? As you've seen, it's pulled down two or three times. Gonna light up the rod, hopefully I won't blind you. Oh. Thought it was gonna rip over then. I don't know. Might be a little bream or might have missed it, but I definitely let that bite develop for about five minutes. Oh well, we got a bite. Have we got a fish? That wind's coming straight along the beach, straight into the camera lens, which is never good. What's up in here then? Stripped. Nah, no. Could be hard again today, everyone. So you out there five minutes. Anyway, I'll keep fishing. If it is easy, you'd all be here. Anyway, I'm loving life. As I said to you, I'm out on the beach. The beach of dreams, not broken dreams. I hate that saying. When people say the beach of broken dreams, I'm like, wow. Really? Anyway, that's enough on me. Let's get this one in the water and keep fishing everyone. Getting light now. I'm literally getting stripped every two seconds. So what I'm gonna do is, like I've done before throughout the summer, is drop one in short. That has worked before, and my bait seemed to, well, I need bait in the water to catch a fish, so. I'm gonna try a little over the head thump. Never ignore the gutter. It's just hard with multipliers. There you go. Drop one in close. Last time I've caught fish in close, we're out far. I can't even hold a bait in the water, getting stripped. But I've got some mackerel in there, so I might have to bulk the bait up even more. This might turn into a bream session, if I'm lucky. I'm just trying to hold out for a cod. The conditions look absolutely bang on out there. I just don't know why this year, more than any other year, it's just something nicking your bait. I don't know if you've had this issue. If you have, classic YouTube style, leave a comment. Tell me what it is. Have you hooked one in the eye? Because I haven't. That bait would be virtually gone now. Anyway, I'll keep fishing. Look at it. It doesn't matter. This is all that matters. Hi, just having a break from baiting up. So they just said on the radio, Storm Agnes is in town. She's due in midday. I'm not sure if you can see it, but the wind is picking up now. Let me show you. coming along the beach. Eventually, it's gonna come in from the southwest, 60 to 80. I won't be here then. 
I've got five wraps of black left. And I should imagine it's seven o'clock now, by 10 o'clock I'll have no bait. I've got some mackerel, I've got a packet of squid. I'm just chucking it out, tying it up just a minute ago, chucked one out, tightened it up, wound it in, the bait was gone. Which is pretty upsetting. The first time back on this beach for a month and I'm, you know, stinking the place out. I'm not doing too great at the moment, am I? You don't have to say it. I know this. But I'm lucky. Anyway, I'll keep fishing. Well, it's not really fishing. I'll keep baiting up. I could do with um, a baiter upper. So if you fancy that, three pounds an hour, shit banter, shit food, no beer, because I'm on a detox. Apply to the shore hunter. <laughs> no, I'm joking, I'll keep fishing. If it is easy, the beach will be rammed. Anyway, thanks everyone. That one's for you. Heading up the west coast in the morning to find a place Where no one knows our faces or our names don't leave now in mind, never make it out alive. Plans are changing, rearranging all the time. So, so why I'm using mackerel is it's a little bit tougher, especially with the skin and bones. See what I mean? That's the first time. I've come in without bare hooks. So I've still got a chance of a bream. Remember, which Dave Brignall reminded me of earlier, not as in today, a few weeks ago when I was in Norway, which I know this, but it's a great saying. When you're out fishing, remember, elephants eat peanuts. So sometimes, like in Norway, I like to fish massive. I don't know why. I love just booming out massive mackerel baits. Sometimes you catch the biggest fish ever on small baits. And that's because, probably like us, well, not like me, I love eating. Sometimes we could just do with a little sweep or a little top up. And I think fish are pretty much the same. I've caught the biggest fish in my life on small baits. And I've also caught big fish on big baits. So it's a lottery, it's fishing. And that's a little story for you. Right, so on that mackerel bait I've just put out, I've got a bite on the right hand one. Look, mackerel and black. Slack them right off. I'm just making my breakfast. And I've got slack line. Oh, please say I don't miss it. No, I've got it. The fish on. I think it might be a bream. Oh, it was on. Might be a small one. Yeah, there's a fish there. It's not a big fish, eh? There he is. Swimming with me at the moment. I think it's a small bream. Wow. God, I've been really trying hard, everyone. Swimming now. Yep. As expected. Woohoo! Oh, I've been trying hard for that. And there you go. A beautiful Chesil Beach black bream. Woohoo! Look, my bait stripped. That was only out there a couple of minutes. Wow. It might be these little chaps. All right, mate, I'm going to let you go. Chill. Oh, they're spiky, aren't they? Calm your tits, darling. You're going back. Anyway, there you go. There's a beautiful Chesil Beach bream in the sunshine before the storm turns up. Thanks, Mr. Bree. Anyway, I'll get this chap back. He's not too happy about being out of water. 
and I couldn't blame it. I've got a slack line on this one. It's really slack. Another bream on. So as I mentioned to you earlier, as I'm using mackerel, I've got a chance of a bream. So what I'm doing is putting strips of mackerel on and putting black around it. And whatever strip of me is taking the black, but they're leaving the mackerel. So what I'm thinking is in my mind, the first five minutes of the cast, I've got a chance of a cod. Once all the black's gone, there's just a chunk of mackerel left and it gives me a chance of a bream. And that's what I've been doing the last few casts. And now I've started getting a few bites. Yeah, this one's going to be another bream. Just in the mixer at the moment, so I might not get it in. Oh, what? The mackerel. Now that's pretty random, I'm not going to lie. Oh, I thought it was a bream. Anyway, that's mackerel. Oh, mackerel. Woohoo! Fresh bait. Yes, mate. As you know, it's always a bonus to catch a bit of fresh mackerel. So I'm just going to show you what I've been doing. Well, you've been away. Look. So there you go. It's nicer with fresh mackerel. So as you see, I've got the blacks on the outside and the fresh mackerel in the middle. My way of thinking, as I said to you when I was winding in that fish, the blacks are getting stripped within seconds from whatever it is, small bream, prawn, shrimps, crabs, I don't think it's crabs. Might be little pite and little white in. For some reason they can't get through the mackerel. It's a lot tougher. I leave the skin on as well. So I've got a chance of a cod. The second I cast it out, I've got a chance of a cod. A cod will take a bit of mackerel anyway, but what I'm finding is the black is gone within seconds and then it's the mackerel left and I'm hitting the bream and I've got a chance of a ray. Sorry, excuse me. I'm indigestion. Um, but yeah, that's the only way to fish it. If I put straight blacks on with squid, my bait's gone within minutes, probably two, three minutes. So I'm not really fishing. Every time I've been winding in, I've either had a bream all the mackerels left. So look, I'll keep fishing. That's enough waffling. That's a nice bait. Even if I may say so, you know, myself. Self praise is no praise. Let's get you some more fish. That's what you're saying. I know. I was just talking to you about my bait enough and this rod was hooped in the rest. I'm in. Feels a bit bigger. I reckon this could be something like a gurnard. I don't know why I open myself up and try and guess what fish I've got. Should wait until I get it in, really. Or do a voiceover after. But yeah, this mackerel's working. Mackerel and a bit of black. It just means I can keep a bait in the water. Oh. I'm fishing well, in hard conditions. Who would have thought it? I don't know what this is. Might be, might be some weed or, We got. Oh no! Nice! <laughs> no. Look, it's a fish, alright? Don't be hating on me because you ain't me. Look, look at that. That is horrible. Anyway, it's a bite, and if I was match fishing, I'd be super pleased. But, as I've said, a little bit of fish, it's quite tough. The blacks are working. They're probably gone in seconds, but if a cog comes along, hopefully I'll get one. But if not, I'm bagging on the eels.
It's coming up to lunchtime, and as expected, it's starting to pick up. Look. Starting to get a little bit lumpy. The atmosphere is changing. It looks proper stormy. Storm Agnes. She's a little bumpy. She's not scaring the shore hunter. No, to be honest, I've just put a massive mackerel bait on one and I finished off all the blacks and a side of mackerel on the other. So I just stuck two big baits, probably 50, 60 yards in that dump and that will do. I'm gonna fish for about half an hour more. But as you know, I've been here overnight and curled up on the floor in there. And I forgot my roll mat, so it's quite emotional. But yeah, this is fishing. This is Chesil Beach. I will continue and when I bring you back, I'll either have a fish or we'll get into the action or I'll be packing up and going home. Either way, you're gonna see this tired, wrinkly face one more time. Yeah. The weather's picked up now and I'm back at the van. After all, I'm very old and stayed out all night. But I survived and I didn't get scared once. Anyway, it's nice to be back on Chesil. Sorry it was hard. Oh yeah. And remember at the start of the video, I was talking to you about our, um, why I do this in my little bit of OCD. So keep that under your cap. Remember, if you're not feeling great, please speak to someone. It's no exaggeration that just over 10 years ago, I lost everything. Just because I had a little bit of OCD and I didn't really know what it was. I read a book, which I'll show you one day. I spoke to a couple of people and I kind of found out that it's pretty normal. It was just my mind playing tricks on me, which I didn't know. For months, I tortured myself to the point of not really wanting to be around. I know this is quite deep, but it is true. Um, but look, I'm not doing this to, to get a few likes or subscribers. I just want to let you know the reason why I don't mind blanking is because I feel lucky to be here like all of us should do. As long as we got life, we got hope. So if you're not feeling great, please speak to someone. If someone like Tyson Fury can speak out, then you can. Maybe a stranger, maybe a friend, or someone you trust. Look, my name's Wayne. Thanks for the 10,000 subs. It means the world. Let's keep fishing. Let's look out for each other. Don't forget to tell the people you love that you love them. Be nice to random strangers and look forward to seeing you and myself on a beach somewhere. That didn't really come out right, but you know what I mean. I'm going to leave now. I'm going to go home. I am making my way off now to meet up with Gemma and Stu to fish in the England Shore Championships for EPSA tomorrow. We've got a practice day where I will be competing against Stu and Gem. So boo to them. But yeah. We're going to film probably our practice day and then we're going to get out and do a little bit of squid fishing for you. So as I've said already, my name's Wayne. This is Chesil. Look out for yourself. Thanks everyone. And I look forward to seeing you this week in Southampton with lovely Gemma and Stuart.